Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And welcome back to my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. Where we discuss mental health in the youth, the adolescents, teenagers, high schoolers, primary schoolers, tertiary schoolers, young, old, rich, poor, black, white, Asian, upper class, middle class, upper middle class, lower middle, upper class, listen, Bahamian, American, Australian, Brazilian, Egyptian, listen, every single type of person that you can think of, any type of person that you can conceive, once you are living, once you are breathing, there is something that can be relevant to you. Now, each episode, we have a certain word or theme that ties everything together. It gives it a certain feeling, if you will. And the word for this episode is persona. It's persona. So let's get into it. I was born in the year 2005, right? So I grew up with social media. Like, social media has never not been. Uh, it has never not been present in my life. It's never been absent from my life. And, you know, saying that out loud, it sounds very sad and it sounds kind of shallow, but I say that to make a contrast between my generation and my parents' generation, right? My parents, they didn't grow up with social media. Social media didn't exist when they were younger. When they were my age, it didn't exist. Right? They didn't have handheld phones. They didn't have cell phones. They weren't able to text and, you know, tweet and DM and all of those things. They weren't able to do any of those things because they didn't exist. So flash forward to my generation where those things do exist, and you can note the differences between the, these two times, right? You can note the differences between... The older generations and the newer generations, due to the presence of the internet and social media and accessible communication, handheld communication, you can note the differences. And there are a lot of good and bad differences, most definitely. There are a lot, a myriad of them. I know for me, in choosing the word persona, I took it from the fact that we make assumptions of, of people's character right, off of people's identity that they show online, make assumptions off of the character and identities and the personas that they show offline, online, because we look at a three-second video and we say to ourselves, well, that must be who they are in the entirety of their life. We box people in into the three-second video, into a momentary snapshot, into a momentary tweet. We box them in because our attention spans have gotten so short. And we have lost the ability to create genuine connection. We have lost that ability. So I can be scrolling on TikTok and I can just be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I could watch a five-second video and it could be like, I don't really like you that much. You kind of annoy me. All of a sudden, it's, I despise this person. You are terrible. I don't like you. You are a terrible person. I despise you. Like, you are absolutely horrendous. We create these elephantine assumptions based off of one five-second interaction or based off of a Facebook photo, based off of a Facebook post, based off a tweet. We create a whole umbrella, right? And we place people under it and we say, this is where you have to be. This is the umbrella of my assumption and you fit underneath this assumption. So this is who you are. We don't give them the chance to walk beyond the scope of our imagination, the scope of our understanding. They have to fit into what we conceive them to be. And I'm speaking mainly for the younger generations right now. Because the older generation does this too, mind you. But social media has enhanced has enhanced the ways in which we interact with one another, but it has also caused a regression in the way that we consider one another. It has caused a mass regression. It has made us inconsiderate of how we make people think and feel because we don't see people as real people. We see them as personas, right? 
That's why it's okay for us, okay, quotes around the word okay, to get online and tell someone that they look so fat and they are so ugly and they are so overweight and hideous and bumpy and they are just so worthless and they don't look anything like they should look. Because at the end of the day, that person that we are seeing, we register them in our minds as a persona. That's not a living human being who has feelings and emotions and thoughts and wants and desires and needs just like me. And you know that's a persona. So it's okay to say to them what we want to say. It's okay to say to them all of those negative and contrary and hurtful things because we don't view each other as real people. Surprisingly, and this is something I believe in my opinion, the internet has taken away the reality of life. We begin to pixelate life. We put life into pixels. We, we view people in real life as personas. So now we transfer from the internet, right? And we meet people in real life and we may have a preconceived notion about them or we may have some type of idea about them. And in the first two seconds of meeting them, we've already formed an entire basis in our head for who this person is, how they are, how they're going to behave, how they're going to be. We assume all of these things because we have forgotten how to forge genuine connection and how to have true viable communication with one another beyond the texting and the messaging and the everything that comes with social media. And there are so many wonderful parts of social media, right? There are so many wonderful parts. There are parts that allow us to connect to people all over the world. We are to form a community bigger than anything that has ever existed, right? Let's find people who are like-minded to us. Find people who are just like us, similar to us, who share the same interests, thoughts, who share what we have. It's so useful for finding people who are similar to you, who make you feel as if you belong. Still, we get so entranced in that and we get so deep into that loophole of this is a place for me to find more people like me that we begin to avoid real life. We begin to avoid the proper way of navigating real life and the proper way of interacting with life itself. We don't interact with life. And you may be like, oh, JJ, what do you mean by that? John, what do you mean by that? Let me give you an example. You can meet someone online, right? And they could post something. And you may not like it. They may post themselves in a blue shirt. You may say, okay, I hate that blue shirt. And you comment that. Hey, you, I hate that blue shirt. That's a persona. Why should you care how they feel? All right? You meet someone in real life who has that same blue shirt. And now you feel, because you can say it online, hey, I hate your blue shirt. You can walk up to that person and be like, hey, I hate your blue shirt. And now that person knocked your teeth out. Now you're bloody. Your lip busts up. And you still hate the blue shirt. Right? Like, you still like the blue shirt. That's your opinion. But the internet has taught us to neglect the proper way of navigating life. It has taken away codes. It has taken away formal greetings. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you? Like, you can't even get a good afternoon of the people these days. I be in school. I mean, I be walking past people. I be walking into my dorm. I say good afternoon. I get a blank stare. I say, okay, girl. Okay. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. I apologize for having manners. I am so sorry. But for some reason in our minds, we believe that because the internet has caused us or taken, does not have need for common courtesy, that real life does not have need for it as well. That is what I mean by we don't interact with life. Because if we interacted with life, we would know the reality of what things were and what things are and what things should be. Once again, speaking to the younger generation and those to supplies too. 
And I know I probably sound like an old man, an old man just being, oh my gosh, the internet man, so sing and so dance and so that. But I really do want us to understand just how badly we've been affected by it. And like I said before, there are so many positive attributes. I'm not mentioning the positive attributes right now. I'm not meaning those. Me speaking about the negative sides of it, the internet and social media, has nothing to do with the positive attributes right now. What I'm talking about is when we look at personas and we not only judge people based off of a five-second clip or a momentary snapshot, but we try to place our whole identity. So we try to recreate ourselves based off of a persona that isn't even real. A lot of times when you scroll through social media and you look at these people and they have perfect lives and perfect ways of living and perfect houses and perfect cars and perfect bodies and perfect kids and a perfect spouse, you don't know what's going on inside that person's life. A five-second video can't tell you what's going on inside that person's life. A picture cannot tell you what's going on inside that person's life. They say a picture speaks a thousand words. Let me tell you something. You can't always read the picture and expect it to tell you a thousand words. You can't. A picture of a woman with her husband and her kids and she's smiling may seem like, oh my God, they're such a happy family. He takes such good care of her. All the while, she could be getting abused or he could be getting abused or the kids could be getting abused. You wouldn't know that just by looking at a picture. You wouldn't know that just by looking at the TikTok. There are so many instances of where we idolize personas and we place personas on this high pedestal just to find out that the personas that we idolize are actually going through hell on a day-to-day basis. They're going through hell. Like, they are literally suffering. A lot of them are literally suffering. And these are the people that we pray to, some of us pray to God, and we are like, oh my God, I want to be like them so bad. I want to breathe like them and sleep like them and eat like them. And I want them and I want everything that they like. I want their money. I want their house. I want their spouse. I want what they have. Listen to me. And listen to me good. Listen to me. Something that I don't believe in is praying for other people's life or lives or praying for someone else's blessing. And let me tell you why. There are people who have never, don't even know the story of Job. All they knew is that all they know is that Job got quadruple. He got back what he lost in triplicate and doubles and quadruple. All they know is that he got it back. But a lot of people don't know what Job went through. They want the Job glory, but they don't want the Job story because Job went through so much pain and trouble. A lot of people couldn't survive that. But a lot of people want the Job prayer. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, I, I, I want what Job had. I want to be so rich and amazing. And I, and I want God to bless me like that. Job's children died. Job was sick. Job's wife told him to curse God and die. Job's, friend told, Job's, Job's friends told him to let it go. They tell that nigga just go die. Job was literally, he said, in my own house, my servants treat me like an alien. He was saying not even the servants mess with him. You can imagine, you hire a butler. You ask the butler to get you a cup of water. The butler walk off. What the? I can't even get a cup of water in my own house. But see, if Job had Instagram, and he, you see him posted up with, you know, his new farm that he got back and all of the new things that he got back, we would just be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Job, I want to be like Job so much. <laughs> I want to be like Job. But you don't know what Job went through. We say we want to be like these personas that we see online. We want to be like them. We want to have what they have. But we don't know what they had to sacrifice to obtain the things that they are showing us in these momentary captures. We don't know. I don't know. And it's an issue, especially with the younger generation, because we like to look at personas and we take the face value and we interpret it as the truth. We can be very shallow at times like that. 
the face value is the truth. There's nothing deeper. There's nothing below that little surface that the face value, what you see is what you get. Like the Thunderman's theme song. What you see is not what you get. What you see isn't always what you get. I promise you that. I even remember when Fantasia did an interview on Fantasia. You know, I love Fantasia. Say, I believe in the impossible. I love Fantasia. Fantasia did an interview and she was like, a lot of the people that we look at, a lot of these artists, they actually broke. They actually broke. But all we see is diamonds and bling bling and shine shine. And we look at that face value. We look at that persona. We look at this character. That's been portrayed and drawn up for us. And we believe it to be the truth. And we want it to be our truth. But when we want our truth to be something else that is not what it seems. Maybe we want our truth to be based on a lie. Is it even our truth? If we want who we are as individuals, if we want our bodies and our emotions and our very ways of living to be formed and shaped and molded by factors that aren't even genuine. Can we consider ourselves genuine people? Can we? Can we really? I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, keep in mind, like I said before, social media actually does help. Right, it helps a lot. Social media can be a way for you to find new friends. I know for me, like I say a lot of times, I didn't have a lot of friends when I was younger. I was like a child. I would, you know, like probably push an empty swing, or probably I'd go sit on the playground, go on the seesaw, go up and go up, go on the other side, then go up on the other side, then go up on the other side, like switch each side of the seesaw up by myself. That's cool. That's straight. I, you know, I had a lot of friends growing up, and that's okay. But social media, I got on Facebook and I see that I'm getting a friend request. People want to be my friend. I I am on Instagram and I see I have followers. People want to follow me. Oh my gosh, I must be so cool. No. And it didn't take me until much later to realize that it says friends, right? It says followers. But In actuality, unless you know these people or unless you have some type of connection to the people who friend or follow you on social media, a lot of them are just looking at you as a persona. They have created this character of you in their mind and each time you post or contribute something to your social media page, you're just adding on to the portrayal of what they have painted of you in their mind. The image of what they have seen you to be. Each time you post, each time you say something, each time you do something, if you have a reputation for being a class clown and you post something funny, well, that's another red nose on the class clown. In my mind, he's a class clown. He being funny on Facebook. That's the class clown. That's who, that is who you are. That is who you portray yourself to be. That is your Say it with me, everybody. Say the word of the episode. Persona. Persona, right? And that leads into another question. Can a persona be genuine? Can an image be genuine? Can a video be genuine? Can these moments, can these brief moments on social media be genuine? They can. They can be. They very well can be. It's Just as easy as it is for, you know, these things to be fake and unnecessary and just created off of a fake, false image, it can very well be where there are moments of genuine love, genuine kindness, genuine interaction on social media. There are moments like that. I'm not going to pretend that there are are not. They exist. They are there. And they happen more frequently than we think. Yes, but they are there. So the next question would be, what type of persona do you portray? Do you portray a false persona or a genuine one? (laughs) 
Because you honestly can't control how people view you. You can't. You can't control. Each person, each individual is different. We all live a different life. We all live a different truth. We all experience a different mental reality. We we are all different. So I can't control how you see me. You can't control how I see you. But what I can control is how I portray myself, how I show myself to the world. How do I want to see myself? If I logged off of my Facebook and I pretended to be someone, like let's pretend I just forgot who I was, right? And I typed in the name John Shaquille Poitier on Facebook, J. Shaquille Poitier, and I scrolled through Facebook, my Facebook, what would I see? Like, what would be the persona, what would that persona, what would J. Shaquille Poitier's persona tell me about him? What would J. Shaquille Poitier Jr. be showing the world that showed that, oh, I'm funny, or oh, I'm a jerk, or oh, I'm actually really cool. Like, what would I show? What would I show? And I think that's a good question for a lot of us to ask. What do we show the world? And I'm not to say because, listen, at the end of the day, a lot of social media for jokes. Social media for jokes. Facebook, jokes. Twitter, jokes. Instagram, jokes. What else? TikTok, jokes. It's for jokes. And that's cool, right? But at the same time, if you portray yourself as a joke, you can't be upset when a lot of people don't take you seriously as a person. Because going back to what I said, we live in a microwave age. We look at something for five seconds and we have determined your entire personality based off of that. So wanting to be taken seriously, but portraying yourself as an unserious person, those two things contradict each other. And not to saying that you can do it because you can do that. However, you should be aware of the fact that people are going to see you as unserious because that is what your online persona is. Your online persona is you're an unserious person. So because that's how you portray yourself online, that's how they're going to see you online. And that's how they're going to see you in real life. And my favorite thing, actually, because I... Mostly use my TikTok to post poems and what's not. And my Instagram like to announce things and my Facebook to announce things and what's not. So my favorite thing in real life to do is when I meet people and they are, and they are like, you are so different from what I thought you would be like. I'm like, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because they expect, a lot of people expect me to be a rigid person, a based off of, you know, things I've accomplished, things I've done, blah, 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 all that crap and what's not. They expect me to be this rigid person with so, so strict and so blah and so meticulous and detail-oriented, which I am. I am meticulous and detail-oriented in my career when I'm working. But in a day-to-day interaction, I am a very unserious person. But the persona that I have created online tells people that I am overly strict. But when you meet me, yes, you will see the discipline that I have acquired in, through the way I was raised, and you will see the, my intelligence. You will see those factors because those are just a part of me. But you're also going to see the laughter. You're going to see the joy. I'm always laughing. I always laughing. I just was in Walmart in the mall the other day with my friends. I just bust out laughing for no reason. I just love to laugh. They just walk away from me. That's okay. I'm still going to laugh because at the end of the day, I love to laugh. That's just who I am as a person. And a lot of people, they don't believe it when they meet me. They're like, I didn't know you were like this. And I'm like, did you ever give me a chance to show you? We have to stop assuming we know who people are based off of a post, based off of how we see them online. There is some truth to it because, like I said, I'm very meticulous, very detail-oriented. I don't play about my work. My work can get done. My poems can get recorded. I'm going to do what I need to do. But at the same time, 
if you talk to me for five minutes, you will you will see just the type of person that I am. Yes, intelligent. Yes, disciplined. But just joyful and sometimes just a little strange, but really just chill. I'm chill. And a lot of people don't get that because they don't see it online. And just to give you that example, that is how people will view you. They will view you as they see you online. And it's okay. It's honestly okay. Even down to when I had my author interview. And I was sitting on the stage. And I just was answering because as an author, I tend not to create any vast difference between my personality as an author and my personality as a person. John Shaquille Poitier Jr., the author, and John Shaquille Poitier Jr., JJ, they're the same person. So I commonly speak with the cadence and the, you know, the verb, the word usage and everything that I use in regular life. And, you know, those things are very good and what's not. But I am also a person who I am genuinely and truly, I just be laughing at my own jokes. So I was on stage, I just was laughing at everything I was saying. And afterwards, I remember sending some of my friends to recording. And I remember sending some people who I don't really interact with in real life. The recording, and it was like, they was they were so not shocked. Because like I said, they have heard me speak. But to see my personality on full display like that, it made them feel as if they didn't know me, which true, they did not. Because like I said, we'd only interacted online. You can't get a good scope, a full scope of who someone is based off of an online interaction. That's why it's so important to go past the persona and actually meet and greet people. It's so important to push past that barrier and actually attempt to connect, actually attempt to form a genuine, true relationship with people that isn't based off of a lit up screen or a tablet or anything like that, but words, feelings, emotions, mental, like it's so important to actually have those things. And you can have those things through social media, but a lot of times we don't because we prefer the shallow methods that we have become so acquainted with and it's so hard for us to tear ourselves away from them. It's very hard to do. So as we go throughout the week, perhaps we can practice not taking the personas, not taking the seconds or perhaps the minute-long videos that we see and creating a whole identity for others based off of these short things. Perhaps we can practice that. And when we begin to practice that, when we begin to alienate ourselves from the idea that entire lives and entire souls and entire understandings are captured in a single picture or in a single recorded moment, I believe we can increase the way we connect. I believe that we can improve the way we connect with others. And it's something worth doing. I genuinely believe it's something worth doing. But that has been all for today. I am your host, John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And this has been my podcast. Darling, I'm depressed again. Don't tell my mother. Until next time.